kind of is. <laughs> okay. I'm the King Hall, but there's nobody in the building, but go ahead. Oh, okay. I just had a quick question about something on the website. I wanted to, to run it by somebody. Sure. Um, okay. It's on the part of the website called Online Library, which is really interesting. You can really search a lot of things. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, it's in an article of the Watchtower. It's an older one. But um, what it says is, I was just kind of surprised me. It says, to hold to the headship of Christ... It is therefore necessary to obey the organization that he is personally directing. Doing what the organization says is to do what he says. Resisting the organization is to resist him. I, so I was just kind of wondering about that. Okay. Uh, now, what, um, what year or what article was that? Um... 1959, May 1st. 59? Yeah. Why, why um, is that funny? You know, well, because of, you know, 1959, uh -huh. a long time ago. So a lot of things have mm, changed a bit. Now, um, what part of that statement surprises you anyway? Well, I'm used to mainstream Christian churches, and um, they would never say this. <laughs> I would not want to go there if my pastor said obeying him is a, equal to obeying Christ, or the denomin obeying. denomination leaders, or obeying. whatever. That it's well, I think I think what the statement back then crudely said um, would be. Or like we have a governing body um, that we call the faithful and discreet slave. So there's a scripture in Matthew that talks about the faithful and discreet slave giving proper food at the proper time. So we feel we're in a very critical time, and we do get direction at times, like like for this pandemic. Um, now, all of our meetings have been virtual for the last two years. So we're very high on sanctity of life, and we're not putting anybody in danger. So we've been meeting virtually. Since we've been meeting virtually, our attendance has almost doubled, but that's because I think it's easier to go to a meeting when you're on a computer rather than actually enter a building. But um, we've kept ourselves spiritually fed. So when they're saying that we need to follow direction, uh, that's that's basically it for us. We'll follow the direction that we're given from the faithful slave. And nothing is ever something that's contrary to what we would normally do. So, you know, if they're saying, uh, if you can, it's, your, it's up to you, but if you can, get vaccinated because it's going to protect you. Well, if we can, then we will, um, but it's not a mandate. So I think back then they were a little, I don't know, a little bit more aggressive in, in words and things, and maybe in the 50s it was like that. But now um, we're an organization. We do believe that um, we have scriptural truth here, so none of us would be seeking other information, but anything that we do know and learn is backed up in the scriptures. So, you know, I'm sorry that you took that kind of in that way, but there's nobody's ever forced to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, I didn't ask about that. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't I uh, was even talking about being forced to become a Jehovah's Witness, but, um, you know, one thing that you said... Um, I would really take issue with that, that they don't say that anymore, because what do you think about um, this statement? Um, it says, at that time, the life-saving direction that we receive from Jehovah's organization may not appear practical from a human standpoint. All of us must be ready to obey any instructions we may receive, whether these appear sound from a strategic or human standpoint or not. Yeah, and we do we do feel that way. Like I said, we take direction from the faithful slave. 
Um, and there are times, like for instance, even what I just said with the pandemic, shutting down all of our buildings and our meetings didn't seem practical at that moment in time when the pandemic really was like not even underway that March and whenever, 2020, 2019, whenever it was. Um, and it didn't seem practical, but we followed direction. As it turned out, that was a good thing. But yeah, we were thinking that this system is near its end. And yeah, they said that in the 1800s too. They've been, that's kind of yeah. their whole thing, well, isn't it? Yeah. They said um, even well, we all did, their dates. And what do you think about all the dates and time parameters they gave? Like, millions now living will never die, and all the different definitions of this generation. And, you know, why are they building yeah. such such buildings now, like their audiovisual complex, <laughs> you know, uh, right. if are, it's the last we're, minute we're, of the last days, right? Exactly, but we're building those things because nobody knows the time and the date. So, okay, I see. Three years or five years. Why did or, it? Ta why if they're you know, if they're the only channel of truth? Why did they take so long to figure out that plain statement of Jesus that nobody knows the day or the hour, and you shouldn't well, set dates? But it, yeah, but it's never been stated. Okay, this is the date. We just feel we're getting close based on everything. You don't, you don't think they've the stated dates, years, time parameters that they had to change and um, extend? Uh, what, is, what does stay alive to 75 mean? Yeah, well, that was back, back again in time. And there's a scripture that talks about the light getting brighter as the time draws toward the end. And there are certain prophecies and thoughts were not infallible. No, 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 they weren't thoughts. They taught those things all over the world as from Jehovah. In some of them, they even said these are God's dates, not ours. And it's meet and do season from Jehovah. So when you say thoughts, no, it wasn't really their thoughts. And they claimed to be the only channel of truth on earth while they were saying those things, you know. Right. Well, we still feel that way. But We've refined the idea of of being too specific on a date if that date is yeah. been mentioned. Why did it take so long when they were the, the only channel of truth? Their last date was the year 2000 that they predicted. Um, and even the overlapping well, we never, generation has a date, that, doesn't it? We've never said that 2000 was going to be a date that... Something yeah, happened. they did. They said the preaching work will be well, completed by the year 2000, something about Armageddon within this century. So well, that would be the you, year 2000. You'd have, to, you'd have to find that specifically in writing yeah. and show me that. Okay, but, can, you, um, can you give me your email? I'll send it along so you can see it. Um, let me think about that. See, since I do not know you, um, well, I'm you can sure. fact check them. I'm sure. You know, I I'm not, I'm not into like making um, up stuff like that. <laughs> I wouldn't know how. But well, you, you can check but, it out you yourself. Know, any, anyway, what's 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 your purpose? Is it to enlighten me? Oh, absolutely. To, mm -hmm. Since you so, say there's no so dates and they didn't mention two thousand, I mean, you you want to have well, accurate I mean, knowledge. Two thousand may have been may have been mentioned but not that it was the time that Armageddon was. Around. Yes, it was. So you, you, I doubt that. In this century, that but, meant the year 2000. Oh, in the century, it said. Right, and that means they were saying that in the 1900s. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you sound to me like a person that isn't interested in finding more about Jehovah's Witnesses you seem like a person that would like to argue with me. <laughs> if that, if well, I that if you're claiming, if they claim to be God's only channel of truth, I mean, isn't it worth discussing with somebody? Because, like I said, for me, discuss, I'm not. I'm just an outsider, and you know, I'm pointing out such an outrageous quote that obeying them is obeying Jesus. I mean, was that true in the past when they taught? 
things they don't teach anymore or teach the opposite of? Was that obeying Jesus? You know, I mean, uh, it's so uh, doesn't really add up of being the well, channel. Well, I mean, to you, it, to you it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, to to all of us, it does. As we see, being here. I mean, I was baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in 1975. Um, and so I've been around for quite a long time. And I've seen changes in thoughts and ideas. Not, remember, not oh, thoughts. Really remember, that. not thoughts and things presented as from Jehovah. The direction yeah. comes from Jehovah to Jesus to them. See, you're conditioned to say yeah. it was just thoughts. No, please don't say that. I, I, I noticed that. also you use the word refinement. When they change something to its total opposite, they call it a refinement. It's kind of to uh, put something else in your mind other than what it really is, right? Well, when you when you say totally opposite, uh -huh. there are things there are things that were um, Bible prophecy, you know, minor things that okay now after careful study, you know, we feel more like this, where other people wouldn't even thinking about it. Yeah, it wasn't their feelings or, or then everything they teach now would be contingent on more careful study and they don't present it that way. They present everything they teach as from Jehovah. Is it okay to say that? At and that, it turns at, Yes. At oh, it's moment, okay. At okay. That moment in time. And it turns out that it yes. wasn't from Jehovah. So who was it from? Where did they well, get it, it? No. It it was from Jehovah uh -huh. at that time. He told them they, wrong things. What they felt. He wanted to trick but you? Not, not wrong. I still yes, they were. <laughs> yeah. See, you got that in your mind because that's a, a mind control type of expression, refined. And then where you talk about other religions or other false prophets, you even mentioned Harold Camping in the literature and they call him a false prophet. <laughs> but see, that doesn't apply to the Watchtower, right? Right. <laughs> that's um, so cool. It's a win-win. Yeah, I guess you could look at that, but uh, we're very comfortable with what we have and what we do, and, you know, can't please everybody, obviously not you, um, and, you know, I, I'm not sure what you think or believe for your own self. I mean, what do you what do you believe? Well, I believe that faith in Christ is salvation. The Bible says that many times. It says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, it doesn't present, you know, what he did for us is just a first step in a multi-process thing connected to obeying an organization. That's what they teach. You can read it clearly in so, the Paradise so, Book. All the things you have to so, do have to do with the organization and the ransom sacrifice. It sounds like you've read a lot of our material. Oh, have yeah, I enjoy reading it. Witnesses? No. Witnesses? I did study for a while. I was witnessing to them about the real gospel, which is salvation by grace through faith, that Christ... So you, are, you obviously, let me ask you, you believe in a trinity, then you believe Jesus is God. He is shared the same divine nature as the Father, yes, and so, is the okay, tri-unity, so, yes, and the so, watch. The problem with that is, could you define what we what mainstream historic Orthodox Christians mean by the Trinity? Could you define it for me so we can have a clear conversation and not what they tell you it means? Well, you believe no, you believe that Jesus is God. I don't believe that the Scriptures support that. And I've been up and down this. What do you mean by Jesus is God? What do you mean by that you think we say Jesus is God? What do you mean? What do you think, you think we mean? You think he's the almighty God. So you, the, you're saying we... You, Jesus and Jehovah are the same thing. Okay. Well, I think you should study it a little more because, no, we don't... When we say Jesus is God, and you we believe we, that he is not the Father. You... You're a we, but you're not everybody that believes in a trinity. So, um, yeah, well, there um, actually is a historic Orthodox position uh, that has been around for, you know, from the beginning. Jesus um, instructed us to baptize in the name of the trinity. Why would he, why would he have that said at every baptism 
in the name, so, the name of so the Father, Son, say, and Holy Spirit. Did he say mention the or, an organization for baptism like you guys do? Yeah, but he didn't say that we're all the same thing. You know, again, so, so when you say the same thing, do you mean of the same nature or do you mean they're the same person? This, the Trinity teaches and people believe that Jesus Christ is divine, that he is the almighty God. So are you saying the Father, he is the Father? Is that what you mean? You think he is people the Father, mean? He is okay, the son, no, the no. That's, that's considered not what you believe. That's no. That's that's, con what that's historically was rejected in the most ancient time. It's called modalism, but un amazingly, the Watchtower presents that as what Christians believe. And if you just talk to an ordinary Christian, your your language true, your language is going to out. your time out. your language you is going to confuse things. them. That is why. You're not gonna, you're not gonna <laughs> let me respond. You don't let me respond. Your lang the language is a I barrier. Hear, I, hear what you're, I hear what you're saying, but you say something that's so totally contrary to to what we experience. I go door to door. I've spoken to people who are born again, who are uh, Baptists, who are Catholic, who are from Bible churches, and we've gone up and down this Trinity, and so. What you're saying is something you personally believe or whoever you're with believe, but it's not what people who believe in the Trinity for the most part believe. The, so, the problem, what? could I just, I just got to say this. The problem is All right, you could say when they're, thing. okay. Right now I am out in the ministry okay. the group. So this is um, the really you know, crucial thing. When they're talking to you, it doesn't necessarily mean they believe modalism. But the language you guys use and what we use is different definition. Like, this is just one example, of which I think is really similar to what happens. Like, a lady who, who actually became a Mormon, like, teacher in their university, when she first got drawn into Mormonism, she said to them, do you believe in the Trinity? And they said, yes, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But little did she know that when they said that, they meant three different literal persons, like bodily, that the Father had a body, Jesus had a body, right? Um, they did not, see, she was just kind of had a Christianish background, and she did not know enough to ask more questions to say, what do you mean by that? So see, she got drawn into that, believing they believe the historic doctrine of the Trinity that most denominations uh, accept. And I think it's very similar with Jehovah's Witnesses. The language, we're, we're talking like past each other because we don't give, stop to first give clear definition. So that's just my well, take, my thought can, on why you, you, you that. think that. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you from experience of talking to hundreds and hundreds right, of people. Right, right. Because they haven't studied so, the Watchtower in depth. Can, what, they haven't studied in depth. They're not, they're, they can't. I'm not talking about people from the Watchtower. No, 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 no. Because they don't know what you mean. They think you mean something different by what they they're do. saying, and you do not know when, what they mean. Because when we say Jesus is God, do. when we say Jesus <laughs> is God, we don't believe Jesus so is name? the Father, Christine. Christine, listen. I've gone through this with people that have studied the Bible. They're very high on what they believe, and we've had hours and hours of conversation over the Trinity, and and I know what they say, and if it isn't what you think, um, you may believe in, you may have a, a, a better understanding of this than all of these other people, but I am telling you, they feel that Jesus is God. The Father? God. That he is the Father? He is the Father. He is the Father. Okay. He is the Son. He is all three. Oh, and that's that's called the modalism. He's deified, de he's deified on earth, and there's nothing you can say, no scripture you can show them, and we've talked hours and hours. That is what they believe. Well, even what you Jesus are saying Christ is... is the Father. Okay, then you're you're you must maybe you have a lot of what's called oneness Pentecostals in your area, which is considered an aberrant Not sect. In our area. Everywhere we've talked to mm. in many different states. 
again, I We've think been in the ministry everywhere. Yeah, I would I would imagine you're I, just talking past each other, but you know, the Orthodox well, no, historic doctrine imagine. is that there's three persons sharing the one divine nature and our our one being. Um, divine plurality so, is shown in the Old Testament just by you can take so many ways listen, it's I, shown just by plurals alone. Well, Elohim I, is a plural. It could the Bible could have used El or Eloah, but it uses Elohim. Let us go down and confuse their language. Let us make man yes. in our own image, Look, et cetera, et cetera. I, I know what you're, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm telling you what people believe, and it's more than the majority of so-called Christians that believe that Jesus is God. And I speak Hebrew, and I know the difference between Elohim, Adonai, and Yahweh. So, um, listen, Christine, I'm going back to my ministry where I can do more good than arguing with you. Uh, thank I, you for your call. I hope you realize that Jesus is the all-sufficient Savior and the Watchtower is a false prophet and not God's only channel, okay? Yes. Okay. God bless you. Okay, thank you. God bless. Oh, hi, is this the Kingdom Hall? It is the Kingdom Hall. Awesome. Well, I just have um, something I was wondering if I could run by you. Do you have a minute? Didn't I just talk to you? I don't think so. Did you? I think so, because I remember your voice. <laughs> you, were the one, you were the one that uh, we believe this and we believe that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's a return visit. Yeah, so you call this Kingdom Hall. Try a different one. Oh, okay. But I can tell you, you're not going to get an answer like me answering the phone. Because we have uh, our buildings, um, I told you, our meetings are all virtual now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're on a, you're on a crusade here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can try what you will, and we'll all find out after Armageddon who's right. Do you think so, they'll ever open up again? I mean, everybody else yeah. has been meeting for, you know, there's some people well, have we, a... Have, we, have, we have meetings. We have meetings. Uh, our regular meetings we have, but I mean at the Kingdom Hall, before. Sanctity of Life. Well, we're not in we're not in the building, but we're all yeah. uh, associating. Together. I mean, but it's we not will. because of the virus anymore, really. I mean, even the well, health officials it, say that. Well, we're still, as far as we're concerned, we're still in level four. Now, and things are going to change in March, and uh, we've already tried some pilot meetings. So if COVID gets really under control, we'll be back in the building. Some we people have the meetings. theory that it's going to an online religion because they're selling so many of the kingdom halls. No, we're not selling any of our kingdom halls. In fact, they're all being retrofitted for hybrid type meetings where some people will be on Zoom and some people will be in the, if you, you know, you're not able to come. So we've just retrofitted all of our halls. They're safe, sound, with cameras and Every kingdom hall in the world. Have you ever so researched about the kingdom halls that are being sold, or are you just believing that? That they aren't there selling any? We are selling There's some, many. And we're building some, yeah. But we have moved, what we have done is merged a lot of congregations. Because uh, the growth? To have big, well, to have, to, to have bigger, like the halls fit more people. And so we think if we have four congregations that meet in the hall, then they may combine a couple here and there and, and put them together and we make those changes and they have to use them in the building. And, and so if we don't need them, but because we're putting more people in. But right now, we will be sort of like, but yeah, we're not going to wait. As far as we know, we're not going to wait to be virtual forever, as long as COVID goes away. Yeah, it's you know, funny. Like it's because some, some researchers and um, people who are formerly, you know, um, high up in the organization who left said that it was going to go to an online religion. This is way before COVID they said that. They said you know, that's I what they were moving I, I to. Meaning, I wanted to ask you, because uh -huh. uh, last time after you got off the phone, I was thinking that maybe once one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and now not, because you really sound almost for us a 
apostate. So I don't know if you wants one of those. No, I mean, you know, you might not believe me, but no, no, I really I, I wasn't. Have, I, have, I have no reason to believe you or not believe you. But, right, right. You know, no. spent so much time yeah. figuring, trying, trying to understand what was wrong. Yeah, it's such but a devastating, it's such better, a, it's just would, a devastating bond. going out the ministry yeah. yourself. It's such you a know? devastating, like yeah, should, it's my territory. Well, maybe you the, should be more positive because you have your strong well, the Bible talks about tearing down strongholds, and you know the whole religion is so is so Christ it's so Christless and gospelless. They take the gospel really away from you, and they insert. Well, why don't why why don't you start your own positive ministry and go door to door? Yeah, I, I do, but when you're when you believe that you go door to door. Yeah. <laughs> not not currently. I I did one time with with one of my churches. We had uh, like a bus oh, ministry. Oh. But anyways, you guys don't go door to door yeah, either well, anymore. Like, so, well, um. <laughs> the right, COVID. right. Yeah, COVID we'll still. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I could see anyway, that. I'm I could see that. Okay. Thank. Good to talk to you again. Try calling another one. Okay. Uh -huh. God bless you.